Our speaker uh, before lunch, Mr. Tapan Mehta uh, from IBM. So I've got two tasks at hand. One is to keep you away from your mobile phones. Another is to not keep you away from lunch. Uh, with six minutes eaten up. So six beers is what I expect. Okay. Um, how do I get this going? Yes. So I would like to give a slightly different spin, being the ninth speaker in a row uh, on deep subjects, auto automotive and uh, software technology. It's not easy to try and come up with different ideas, but I'll, I'll try and give it a different perspective. So, oops, I want to lose a minute here. I lose my beers as well. Yes. So if you look at the pervasively interconnected world, around us. As we start instrumentizing and digitalizing all assets around us, we're talking about a future where you see software everywhere. And software everywhere brings in its own set of opportunities and challenges. To just give an example, in the automotive industry, a car today has more lines of code uh, than what the Mars rover had uh, when it was flown off. And that also brings us to the next strategic imperative, which is digital differentiation. The differentiation in, in, our, in our products going forward will be software driven uh, and will have to be digital in nature. Now this talks, this affects all areas, you know, user centricity, user experience, the way we build and design our products, the way we maintain it, uh, the way we keep in touch with what's going on in real time and, and, and taking decisions accordingly. It also brings a completely new set of challenges. So from an automobile industry, Engineers used to designing a physical product with some level of electronics, telematics, telemetry, have to now start talking about a product which is significantly larger amount of software connected in real time, generating tons and tons of data, which we all heard about. And of course, the operational excellence part. Uh, we also heard a few speakers talk about the fact that you know, customers should be willing to pay. There is a cost for innovation. There's a cost for features. Well, there's also a cost reduction discussion that we can have with these technologies coming in. So what's our vision of the, of the connected car? What's the future connected car going to look like? Um, self-managed, self-aware, self-enabled. That's, that's how we would call it. You know, users are creating or expecting a different level of relationship with the car. Right? We're talk, really talking about relationship. The experience we have beyond the steering and the power of the engine and the speed and, and the takeoff and the mileage. It's about a real-time experience in perpetuity with the car or the automobile that you're going to be. Imagine getting into a car in the future and saying, how do you feel today? You're not talking to your wife, you're talking to your car. And the car responds back to you and says, not so okay, need to get a servicing done, should I book an appointment, um, your, your diary is free on so-and-so date, you don't have any other uh, commitments, the garage is booked, the car goes in, gets serviced, self-evaluates whether the servicing is okay or not, makes the payment, and there you're done. Now, these technologies, and in these aspects, whether it's self-integrating, self-configuring, self-learning, will be powered by technologies that we just heard about today morning, and the ones that are still coming in. You know, augmented intelligence, um, replicating and understanding human intelligence and, and trying to put that into a digital format. Deep learning, machine learning, robotics. Um, these are areas in which uh, these are capabilities which will power the, the car of the future. So let's take a moment and talk about Oli. Now, Oli, if you've heard about Oli, how many of you have heard about Oli? A few. So Oli is a car that was designed by Local Motors, IBM, and Phoenix. And this car is currently on the roads in a couple of places. Uh, it was designed and developed in a span of less than two years. It took three months to get uh, the building going. So this is a 3D designed car, a 3D designed mini bus, uh, what you can call it. And it took another eight weeks uh, to develop the software and the cognitive capabilities around it. Now, Oli is, apart from being an autonomous car, so it self-drives itself, uh, it is not just that. It's an ecosystem, an ecosystem in motion. It's something that can actually go and experience today. So you can interact with the car in natural language. You can speak to your car. And it recognizes who you are and what your needs are. Uh, it self-drives, of course. And the beauty of the next stage of Oli is going to be 
uh, as we as features get developed, it's an ecosystem-based feature development discussion. So there are hackathons. People come up with ideas. Um, you know, these ideas are sprint. You know, if you've done design thinking, you know, have sprints, and then you take some of these forward based on the practical acceptability of those ideas uh, in the market. So 2016, Ollie gets launched. 2017, we see Ollie number two in Berlin. Uh, 2018 CES, uh, the initiative which was launched was Accessible Oli. So if you go and do hashtag Accessible Oli, it talks about crowd, crowd thinking and crowdfunding of ideas of where can Oli go to the next level. And this is real. This is happening today. If you're not experienced Oli, go and have a look at that on YouTube. And, and we again come back to software everywhere, digital differentiation, and operational excellence. Now, all of this is being powered by data. And we heard that data is a new currency. Well, data is the new natural resource. It's not really a currency yet. Data is the new natural resource. We need to understand this data. We need to get insights of this data and make it into actionable insights. And what quantum of data are we talking? Zettabytes, 44 zettabytes in two years. This is not the distant future. This is 2018, third month, 2020, is what we're talking about in terms of this data volume being generated. Right? And it's going to be all kinds of data, not just vehicle data. It's social media data, weather data, um, infrastructure data, all of that coming in. And that's the explosion. And the key part here is the unstructured nature of the data. So the structured data is what we are all used to. Uh, you know, Even the sensor data that's going to come in is, is structured but there is a massive amount of unstructured data which is going to start coming in. If you want to interact with your car and you're going to talk to your car, it's going to be unstructured data. So the two layers here. So you can't put this data in a server. You can't put it in your back office. It has to be in a powerful medium, which is the cloud, where it can be stored, shared, analyzed. So that's one part. New use cases coming up. The second part is going to be the cognitive nature of it. So you need cognitive capabilities to be able to make sense of unstructured data. You also need cognitive capabilities to start giving you nest-based action or, or actionable insights uh, on all areas of work. So if you have a vehicle generating tons of data as it moves on the road, the insights that you can gain could be in different areas. It could be on your build and design innovation. It could be the way it is operated. It could be the way that it is being experienced and also being maintained in the future. So what do we do in this space? IBM's view of this world is a slightly bit more comprehensive world. Uh, starting from you know, cognitive sensing devices, you know, digital twins, a virtual representation of, of, and I'll come to digital twin, twin in, in the next slide. But starting with that, moving into continuous engineering. We are now talking about a car or a vehicle that's going to be designed continuously on the software side and also on the hardware side. You know, and borrowing a joke from my old days in the IT industry, the only thing that works in a computer without the software, the two things that work, the power supply and the fan. So if you were to correlate that to the automobile industry, software is going to have a significant impact going forward. And as you, as you look at the engineering function around it, you know, model-based system engineering, and all these use cases that we talked about, autonomous, you want to drive a car from here, one kilometer straight line view, the software programming and the, and the software modeling is going to be much more sophisticated. And you need a whole bunch of tools for that. And then as you build up all this information up, you get to industry solutions. So it's good to have cloud platforms with generic IoT services, microservices moving forward. We have taken one step forward for the auto industry. We've worked for several years with auto majors and tier ones. And our view is that certain APIs and certain microservices need to be available to the industry today to start innovating for the next layer. So what's an IoT for ATI? Uh, what's an IoT for automotive? is a standalone SaaS, op SaaS offering, which actually brings about driver behavior, vehicle health, uh, and connectivity to the infrastructure. It's available today. Now I want to skip the rest for now and come to a digital twin. Now this is the one idea I didn't hear in the nine speakers. So maybe it's the unique one that we talk about. As you build the product, and as you get information about how the product is being utilized, 
in this case, the automobile. One would want to have a virtual representation of the product design. And you get this from software and also from the hardware. So PLM and ALM. Both these systems with different artifacts, different engineering teams, different silos need to come together to give us a single virtual representation of the vehicle as a whole, on which you can do regression testing. You can apply insights coming in from how the vehicle is being used in, to, uh, in real time, and then come up with better innovation at all the three layers that we talked about. Design, so design improvements can happen in real time. Uh, of course, build cannot happen in real time, but build can be enhanced and quickened up, uh, and also in terms of service capabilities going forward. If you look at these two areas together, if you look at the platform IoT for Automotive bringing in insights into the actual driving behavior and the vehicle uh, statistics, you look at the cognitive digital twin, what you then start looking at is an industry transformation which will be based on a rate card of new revenue streams that can be generated based on these insights. And it could be based on completely new insights that you have from the way a particular model of car is being used in a particular section of the country. And we are working with many customers today in this space. We are looking at design innovation, both in automotive industries and also in non-automotive industries. So we have examples from, from the white goods industry, where people are talking about not selling washing machines in the future, but selling you know, paper wash kind of model. Or elevator manufacturers not talking about single time, you know, buy a single time capital cost on elevators and maintenance for the next 10 years. It's paper footfall. Uh, of the elevator. And those kind of models is what probably will be the, the true nature of disruption and innovation that happens in the automobile industry as well. So that's it for me. Three minutes short. Stay connected. We can talk about this in detail uh, if you have the time, but I just wanted to keep it short for now. Thank you very much.